Welcome back, DPV TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and I'm joined by Jordan Drake, but remotely, which is kind of a throwback. Oh. What's going on, Jordan? I have COVID, Chris. Oh, I dodged no. it for over two years. Maybe I got cocky, I don't know. But uh, anyways, we are isolating for at least this episode. Uh, so we're <laughs> going to kick it old school through uh, webcam, just like we did in the early days. And the topic of the video today, I think, will actually work really well for this. Yeah, what we're going to talk about is actually our top five favorite lenses for Sony E-mount. Uh, it could be third party, it could be Sony original, and we're going to kind of break it down into wide angle lenses, sort of your normal standard lens range, portraits, telephoto, and then super telephoto. All right, so let's kick things off with wide angle lenses. And our runner up is a wide angle prime. And this is a real advantage in the E mount. There's a whole bunch of really bright wide primes for it. And this is an area where some other manufacturers are maybe a little bit behind. They could do a bit <laughs> of catching up there, maybe. But our runner up for this is the 14 millimeter F1.8. Now, this is a brilliant focal length and aperture for doing astrophotography. And there is a Sigma 14 millimeter F1.8 that was a popular option for that for quite a while. But that lens is a boat anchor. And then Sony brought out this G Master version that was incredibly small. I think it was like half the size of the Sigma, but also an incredibly fast focus motor and the optical performance on it was just tremendous. Absolutely, but what's our favorite lens for wide angle? Well, you know, you might think of some good zooms that they make like the 12 to 24 G Master or the 1635 2.8. I mean, good, useful zooms, but really going back to what you said about having excellent fast primes, we're gonna give it to the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master. I mean, first off, it is a nice compact lens. 24 millimeter is, in my opinion, the most versatile wide angle prime, wide enough for a lot of applications. You can always crop it down if it's too wide for a lot of situations, but also it gives us an excellent 1.4 aperture. So it's great for low light photography, street photography, night photography, even astrophotography applications. And I remember when we tested it out, it was just like a near perfect lens optically. And this is really significant because, you know, up to this point, Sony's G Masters kind of left some stuff to be desired. And I feel like this is a real turning point, hey? Eh? Yeah, ever since that 24 millimeter 1.4 came out, we've just been blown away by the quality of their G Master lenses. It feels like, I don't know, maybe they hired some genius right <laughs> around the time the 24 1.4 came out. And ever since then, it's just been a whole new level of quality. And this lens is, like you said, the turning point that really started that. So for next category, we're talking about normal, that standard general purpose lens range, your bread and butter lens that you're gonna use most of the time. And so Sony does now make an excellent 24 to 70 G Master version two. I think that has to be pointed out. It is a great lens, but I'm actually gonna go with third party because those are expensive lenses, those G Masters, and Tamron made an excellent lens that can really compete. Now it's the 2875 2.8 version two, the G2. Very important that you go with that one. But this is an awesome lens. I know it doesn't go to 24 millimeter wide angle, but it's sharp at 2.8, has beautiful bokeh, something they really worked on improving over the older version. And I think if you're on a budget, you just wanna save money, you can still get a really capable, rugged, general purpose professional zoom with the Tamron G2. Okay, so if you're one of the people like, oh man, that Tamron 2875 starts at 28, I really missed the 24, then you're gonna be very disappointed. Wait, what are you gonna do, winner. Jordan? <laughs> Uh, it is the 35 to 150. Uh, now, this could all be in like your standard zoom and your telephoto. It's such a great range. But the amazing thing is this is an F2 to 2.8. So you're getting like prime level brightness with this in a surprisingly compact lens. And you'd think there would be all kinds of optical compromises from that. But it was very sharp, controlled all of those aberrations very well. It was even breathing corrected. So it was a great video lens. And if you're doing especially like poor portrait work. This is the range that you're always going to be working in, but you're no longer juggling between your 2470 and your 70 to 200. This covers both of those brilliantly. It's a wonderful lens and it's only available in Sony E-mount. For a lot of people, I think this lens alone is worth buying into this mount. You know, when I first heard about it, we were going to review it. I thought the same thing. I'm like, this is a ridiculous folk length. Very strange. Doesn't make sense. But really, you start to realize, okay, it starts at 35 millimeters, but you're probably gonna get yourself an ultra wide zoom. A lot of people go that way, like a 1635 or something, and it complements this lens beautifully. And it really, in some cases, like you say, mitigates even the need for a 70 to 200. You don't even have to have the triumvirate of 2.8 zooms. You can have just two good lenses, still cover big range. I think it's a huge win. Next category is portrait lenses. And let's not forget, 
E-mount also extends to Sony's 6000 series of APS-C bodies, and made specifically for those is a great option in my opinion. It's again a third-party lens, the Sigma 56mm f1.4. I think is just perfectly designed for portraiture. It has really nice out-of-focus rendition on it. It actually handles flare really well, so if you like to shoot backlit portraits like I do, it's an excellent option. But also, it's just very compact and extremely affordable. So if you're looking to experiment with portraiture on one of those crop bodies, this is definitely the best lens option out there. I really did like the 56 mil on that Sigma because that little extra telephoto range, you convert it into full frame terms. It's a lot like an 85, which is my all time favorite focal length. But what about full frame terms? I love 85 as I just stated, but unfortunately, so I mean, Sony make the 85 mil 1.8. That's a good lens. It's very decent. Nothing bad to say about it. You know, fairly affordable. They make a 1.4 G Master, but that does leave a lot to be desired, unfortunately. And then you do have good third party support. I mean, uh, Roken on Samyang, they make a nice 85 mil portrait lens. Viltrox do as well. So I decided instead to go in a different direction. There's a very unique focal length that used to be used for portraits a lot back in the day, and I think a lot of people miss out now, and that's the Sony G Master 135mm 1.8. I mean, this is a beautiful lens. Great for head and shoulders portraits, just nice field compression. Uh, if you can get back with enough distance and do full body portraits with that, it just gives you such a unique look that separates your subject from the background. Beautiful bouquet, I mean, buttery smooth. It's just a gorgeous, unique looking lens. Yeah, that is my absolute favorite candid photography lens right now. And I would really like to see in some of those other lens mounts some really strong 135 millimeter prime options because I think that's a very useful focal length and it, like you said, has been kind of neglected as of late. All right, so next category up is telephotos. Chris, what do you got for me? Yeah, so we're talking first off of like your general purpose telephoto range. This is what covers all your portrait stuff, you know, low light shooting, sports and event photography, even wildlife with a teleconverter. So think, you know, 70 to 200, 2.8 zoom kind of range. Going with third party, I'm actually going to go as an honorable mention with something that has a little bit of a different focal length. It's the Tamron 70 to 180 2.8. Now, you're not giving up much 180 to 200 millimeters, but what we really loved about this lens was first off, very sharp, even wide open, well corrected, but also really compact. Like, very compact, like you can easily fit into a smaller messenger bag compact. And I think for people who just want less to carry or maybe you're gonna go travel or something like that, that could be a really big advantage. All right, so our winner for best telephoto lens is definitely a more premium option, but we were just floored with the quality of the 70 to 200 2.8 G Master version two from Sony. Now the original was kind of an underwhelming lens and tons of sample variation, but they managed to correct all of the deficiencies in the original 70 to 200 G Master while at the same time dramatically reducing the weight. It was just such a compact, easy to carry around telephoto, but then the focus motor was dramatically improved. Sharpness is substantially better. I think this is actually the best 70 to 200 28 on the market and of anything from the other manufacturers and that is a huge step forward. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're a working professional, you know, although it does have a high price point, it's worth every penny. This is a lens you would buy and use for so much of your work and it should last you many, many, many years. So yeah, high price tag, easily justified. I loved using that lens. All right, Chris, let's talk about super telephotos when you get into those really long focal lengths. And we hadn't seen a bunch of options in mirrorless until quite recently. I think everybody's trying to flush this out a little bit, and Sony has some very compelling options in their E-mount. But we were really struggling choosing which one is it going to be. We've got one we absolutely love as a money is no object option and one that's a great budget choice. So I'm going to talk about the budget choice, and that is the Sigma 150 to 600. Now, this is just such a useful focal length for wildlife shooters. And Sony does have an excellent 200 to 600 mil that I like a lot. But the Sigma is quite a bit less expensive and actually has some really interesting design decisions, like the ability to loosen up the zoom ring enough that it's actually a push-pull lens. And I love this when you're going to be needing to move very quickly through the zoom range, which happens often with wildlife photography. Uh, it's just a very fast way of working. And if you prefer having a twist zoom, then you can just 
tighten up the zoom ring on it and treat it like most modern super telephotos, but very affordable performance on it was absolutely excellent. Uh, I think it's a great option. Yeah, you know, I was also thinking, well, what about the Tamron 150 to 500? Also an excellent super zoom, very well built. But when you factor in that, you know, if you are gonna go with the zoom, you want as much reach as possible. I think the extra 100 millimeters on the Sigma, plus the fact that it just has a wider aperture throughout that telephoto range, that really makes a lot of sense to just push the Sigma forward. But yeah, this is a tough choice because for me, uh, money is an object, but for a photographer, money isn't an object or they're definitely a dedicated wildlife shooter. I think then you might want to go for something a little bit more like a high-end prime, right? Like a classic 400 millimeter 2.8 and the Sony G Master is a beautiful example of that. You know, especially when you look at other companies like Canon, for example, where they're making nice lenses, but for their mirrorless mount, they're basically just taking SLR 400 millimeters and 600 millimeters, extending them out and stick him on mirrorless, Sony actually made a purpose-built lens for their E-mount system, and it's a beautiful design. I loved how versatile it was when we went up in the Porcupine Hills. I could shoot wildlife, I could shoot landscape. It's beautiful wide open, and I think this is worth the money. Yeah, and we should also mention, if you're looking for a little more length, there's a sister lens, the 600 millimeter F4, which is functionally identical to the 400, still an absolutely beautiful lens. We settled on the 400 millimeter 2.8 just because we find that's a a little more versatile focal length for sports and wildlife shooters who are primarily going to be using these lenses. Yeah, I love being able to use a lens like that, but for me personally, especially when budget can afford, I like the super zooms. I'd go for the Sigma 150 to 600 myself. Looking at all these excellent lenses that we picked, one thing that really stands out to me is what a huge advantage Sony's third-party lens support is. And those Tamron and Sigma lenses are honestly some of the best in class. They're not just budget options anymore. They're making some super compelling options. And I think Canon and Nikon could really learn from Sony, open up those mounts, and it's just gonna make their cameras a lot more attractive. Yeah, I would absolutely love to see that, Jordan. I think the other takeaway is, for the most part, Sony have always made excellent G Master Primes. There are some examples, though, that we wanna see redone, but, when it came to those classic professional zooms, the 24 to 70, the 70 to 8s, they really left a lot to be desired. They were priced like world-class lenses, but they just didn't compete. And so it's wonderful to see that Sony is now redesigning those lenses and that they're fantastic optically. They're really doing a good job with the new versions and they're worth the price now. So I'm eager to see what else they come up with in the G Master line. But overall, you've got great third-party options and you now also have some great professional Sony options. Well, those are our picks for the best E-mount lens options, but I'm sure that you're screaming at your screen right now. <laughs> How could you have possibly forgotten this? This is a huge glaring omission, so let us know in the comments below uh, which ones were an oversight there. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If so, I would really appreciate a subscription. It would make me feel a lot better, and I could use that right now. Actually, Jordan, some studies show, not any scientific studies show, that uh, subscriptions could actually cure COVID. So, you know, let's give it a try, viewers. Let's try to help Jordan out. We'd really appreciate those subscriptions and make him feel better. Otherwise, as well, let us know what other lens mounts you would like us to tackle. I mean, we would love to do this kind of video for other lens mounts. Let us know what you want to see next, and we will jump on that. But otherwise, Jordan, from myself sincerely and all the viewers at home, we do hope you feel better soon. Thanks so much, Chris. Hopefully I'll be seeing you in person very, very shortly for another episode of DP Review TV.